I'm here with Carl Litzenmeyer, and he and I have agreed that we're going to do a brief oral history of my 12 years at Trinity um, for pros prosperity. Prosperity. Pros <laughs> Can't even say it. <laughs> so without further ado, what's your first question, Carl? All right. Very, very brief. Okay. Just some right <coughs> general bio uh, bio biographical information. information. Um, when were you born and your family and siblings? So I am the second son of a second son. My father was, had an older brother, um, and I have an older brother. The, just two of us in the family. My parents um, were both born in 1922. Both are now deceased. Um, I grew up out, people say, where are you from? That's a hard question. But I generally say that I grew up outside of New York City, in a, in a suburban New York City, um, oh. in a, and went to a attended a congregation that was very much like Trinity, very lively, lots of, lots, lots going on in the congregation. So that really f formed me um, as a child and a teen. Mm -hmm. What more do you want to know? Well, that pretty well finds the, your <laughs> source anyway. Okay. Um, now, what is, uh, this is something that I can't uh, contribute to. Okay. Because when I was here, when, Father Pennington was going to retire. Mm -hmm. uh, there was what's called a nominating process, and I don't really understand that too much. Could you talk about what uh, was Trinity looking for, and so on and so on? So uh, Joe Pennington retired in 2010. They had a, a nominating process where they gathered candidates from all over the country, and they sent us uh, a lengthy um, portfolio of what they were looking for, what the history of Trinity was, and there were two things that attracted me to Trinity. Mm -hmm. The first is um, the reach out into the community. That's what I was doing in my last congregation, St. Luke's in Scranton, and continued to do that proudly here at, at Trinity uh, during my time here. And the other thing was worship, um, and especially preaching, that those are the two things where this was a very attractive place for me to come. Very exciting. Um, Time. And so I, Joe retired in 2010. I began on March the 1st, 2012, with an interim with Nicolette Papanek as yeah. the interim rector. She was fantastic. Yes, yeah, she certainly was. She was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Now, when <coughs> when Joe uh, retired, and during that time when, when uh, Papanek was here, mm -hmm. wh what uh, did you think of? the parish when you arrived as to what you thought of it on paper before you arrived. Um, so what was happening when I arrived, and this was as part of the nominating process, during uh, meetings with the congregation, these things became evident. But it was even more apparent once I arrived. Number one, you were having a change in cler clergy leadership. Right. Joe was leaving, I was coming. Okay. So that was expected. Number two, you were having a generational change in lay leadership. Oh. So uh, people who are my, you know, the, si the end of the silent generation and into the baby boomers were stepping aside and Gen Xers and, and below were coming into lay leadership. And that was um, uh, interesting, it took a lot of kind of negotiation between the generations um, in order to establish some very stable and excellent lay leadership, but it took a while. Mm -hmm. And number three, an under we we're changing the understanding of w how Trinity made decisions and organized itself. Mm -hmm. And that was the one that just about broke me. Oh my. Um, because it, unfortunately there was some language deployed that, that was not helpful about what we, what we were becoming, and instead of people were focused on language rather than on function or behavior. Mm -hmm. And so after a couple of years, we began to calm down a little bit, but we, um, we are organized differently than we were. Uh, the, the vestry used to be in charge of everything, which is why it was 15 people when I arrived. We're down, now down to nine. Mm -hmm. So they were the heads of committees. They were doing all the work. And we then broadened that leadership out to committee chairs commission chairs, and the vestry then is just, not just, is overseeing all the functions rather than doing the work right. in right. concert with the rector. But those three things going on all at once 
was a big low. So from about 2012 to maybe the beginning of 2015, um, it, was a, it was a tough road to hoe. Yes. Yeah, I lived through that too. I was here. <laughs> um, you were. <laughs> and of course, e even when Joe came, I was told that there were some people who left for other yes. churches. And the same thing happened here, of course. So and, and I think that's a normal thing that happens. It is. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. Well, they want something that they are comfortable with, I guess. So well, anyway. Change, change is hard. And change is hard. As, yeah. as uh, my dear friend Rick Worth, a member of this congregation, says he was a former Roman Catholic priest, mm -hmm. and he says the tide brings in some sand and the tide takes out some <laughs> sand. That is true of parish life as well. And so people um, can be destabilized by that because they see people leaving right. and don't often notice the new people coming. So by 2015, you would say I things are beginning to come together? They were. Uh, All right, we so were very, yeah. In those five years from there to, say, the COVID, COVID. issue, what uh, were those very fruitful? Or? They were very fruitful. I was able to get out. I mean, because we, we decentralized functions, right. I had more, t and one of my intent stated intentions was to be out in the community making community connections, okay. not just being here. So I was able to get out into the community, make a lot, several, many um, connections to people like the, um, the emergency shelter, oh. um, Northern Kentucky Community Action Commission, they okay. became an important part of this, um, Gateway uh -huh. Community and Technical College, they became important to us. Okay. And to say, to come alongside these people and say, we're not here to proselytize. We're asking, the, I'm asking the question, how can right. we help and how can we be in partnership in order to then strengthen the, the larger Covington community? Because we're an integral part of it. We're not separate. We're not just a Sunday morning entity. Mm -hmm. We're a community mm -hmm. entity. And so much more recently, but I think this, this is a retrospective, somebody recently said, Trinity is Covington's church. That is ah. a high compliment. Boy, that certainly is. what we set out to do when I arrived. I would say, so that's, that would that's really impressive. It is. Yes. Now we get to the COVID years, and I never thought that we would have to <coughs> have you use the uh, parking lot for a worship service, <laughs> but I know that we did. We did. So tell us about those times. Oh. COVID was, oh, you know, everybody, you all know what COVID was like. It was one of the most challenging times in, in my life personally and certainly mm. in the life of the congregation because we had to invent things on the fly. Mm -hmm. um, one of the proudest moments, I think, was coming together with um, having um, small groups, community stewardship, um, I, I can't remember what they're called, but caring service, uh -huh. and that everybody got a personal touch at home, we would deliver flowers. We would we would go out and make sure that people are were remaining connected to Trinity through either phone conversations, personal visits on to right. people's front lawns, I, texts, emails, whatever it was, I so that we then that. Yeah. maintained. We had a very strong congregational right. focus on that and didn't let people drift because it was also and we also gave people hope. So that was yeah. good, but but kind of hard. Right now, did we lose any members due to COVID? We lost no members due to COVID. We lost spouses of members, but nobody oh. at Trinity died. Wow, that's pretty good. So now we come to what we might call the, the, the present time, say the last two years or so. Would you say that that's a regrowth or? Yes. Um, I, I thought when COVID ended and we sort of came back together that it was, it, that was a challenge as well. Resettling into patterns which are the same, some of them are the same, some of them are different. How do we adapt? Um, but Trinity is so resilient. It's just such a resilient congregation mm -hmm. that we now, in the last two years, 2023 and 2024, uh, Josh Mitchell, who was our senior warden, who was also a numbers guy said, in 2023, we grew by, our average Sunday attendance grew by 9%. That's pretty good. And then in 2024, we're up 12%. Mm. So we'll see whether that, that continues. But I think right. that then speaks to the, the strength and health of this congregation at this present moment. Cool. That's very, yeah, that's very good. So 
Now, after you mm -hmm. you uh, after retire, yes, what is your life going to be like? Well, uh, my husband Greg Hinson and I are moving to San Miguel de Ande in Mexico. We have a uh, we've been going there about five years, um, huh. and so we have bought a house. So we will be retired in Mexico. There's a wonderful Mexican Anglican church, which if you didn't know it was Mexican Anglican, you would assume it's an Episcopal church. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. It was the 1920, the 19, the, the 1979 Book of Common Prayer, the 1982 hymnal. Yeah. And so it's, but it's a very lively and again growing congregation of both English speakers and Spanish speakers. Oh, it's so bilingual. It's a very, okay. Yeah, it's a great congregation. So that's going to be obviously a large part of our lives, um, and just enjoying retirement, um, seeing what life brings. I, I don't well, have that's wonderful. Own plans. Well, you need to keep in touch. You need to leave your addresses and how we can connect with you so, so we can pester the living hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my postal address is in the May edition of the Chimes. Good, okay. So that you can all keep in touch with me. All right. Cards, letters, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Right. I just, I want to just take one minute uh, in this to, to talk about the clergy who I've gotten to work with in, in the uh, years I've been here. So oh. Linda Young was the, the associate rector when I arrived. She mm -hmm. and I, again, had a very strong bond, good working relationship. And then during the, the halcyon years, if you want to use that, the, from 2015 to 2020, I had Justin Gabbard as the assistant rector and mm -hmm. Joel Rockta as the deacon. That was a good And that was setup. just a, a, a fantastic yeah. set of relationships. We worked well together and really, I think, helped the congregation grow spiritually as well mm -hmm. as numerically during that time. And now we're in a new place and um, uh, that's continuing. I want to thank you all for my wonderful 12 years at Trinity, and may God be with us all. I will personally miss you. I will miss you too. Thank, thank you. you.